Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen. I hope you are ready for a week of meat and potato meals. So if you like your meals quick and easy with a little bit of down-home flavor, just grab your sweet tea, kick back, relax, and let me do the cooking. We're going to start this week with some black iron steaks and some crispy loaded Hasselback potatoes. I am taking some really large baking potatoes and you're just going to cut slits in them a good ways through. You want to not go completely through the potatoes and this is very hard to do on these huge baking potatoes. If you have a smaller potato in the recipe, she suggests lining up two chopsticks on each side and slicing down to the chopstick will keep you from going all the way through but this is what my husband had brought home from the store he was wanting steak and a big old potato and i decided to make these hassleback potatoes out of it but in a saucepan i have melted about six tablespoons of butter and i'm adding in one teaspoon of salt about a half teaspoon of pepper two tablespoons of olive oil, and then I'm gonna throw in about two cloves of chopped garlic. Just gonna combine all this and warm up that melted butter through. You're gonna take about half of your melted butter mixture and brush it across the top of your potatoes. I'm doing the best I can to try and get some down in between those little slices. But like I said, with these huge baking potatoes, it was really <laughs> difficult for me. If you've been following my channel, you know the last couple weeks I've had really easy videos. I've done a whole week of crock pot, soups and meals and then I did a whole week of just one dish skillet meals. Well my husband he is really a meat and potatoes guy. He enjoyed all the weeks of the easy things I made but I knew he was ready for some meat and potatoes and I just wanted to serve him this week. I wanted to read you a scripture out of Luke 22. This was in my Bible study last week and it's Jesus talking with his disciples about being his servant. He says, among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. And Jesus says, I am one among you who serves. You know, being a servant is really the ultimate role of leadership. And you may feel like you don't have a leadership role. You are a leader in your home. You're a leader among your friends and your family. And Jesus really turns the world upside down. He says, in this world, people look to be lifted up and to be served. But his way is to be a servant. And that's what I long to do here in my home with my friends and on this channel. I want to be a servant. Truly being a servant is putting the needs of someone else above yourself empowering and lifting up other people to be what God has called them to be. And that's what I wanted to do this week, was just encourage my husband. So I pray that you will be a leader among your family and among your friends as well, and look for ways to serve other people this week. Anyway, back to the potatoes now. You are going to cover them with aluminum foil and you're going to bake them in a 425 degree oven covered for 30 minutes and I did forget to cover mine at first. I had to pull them back out after a few minutes and cover them. But while they're baking, I am going to just take some sharp cheddar cheese slices that I had and cut them into smaller pieces. And look at that. I think it's funny how that green onion is exactly how I wanted my potatoes to look. And, you know, if you're not trying to do something, you can do it. 
It's just Murphy's Law, ain't it? But I am chopping those green onions up to go on the top as well. After about 30 minutes, you're going to pull your potatoes back out of the oven, uncover them, and you can see my parchment paper is beginning to look a little brown and crusty here. That became a problem for me a little bit later on. I hadn't showed y'all a good mess I've got myself in in a long time, so I thought it was time <laughs> to show you one. Seems like I do this a lot, but you're going to take the other half of your butter and seasoned up mixture and spread it across your potatoes again trying again to get down in between all those little potatoes and these are going to have a crispy texture to them but these were so big i really had to cook mine a long time to get them through to get them done through and even then in the very thickest center part they were not done all the way through but they were delicious so I've cooked mine about 30 more minutes. And again, look at this parchment paper. You know I love the Dollar Tree, but this Dollar Tree parchment paper, it just does not hold up in a higher temperature. So there's just a little warning for you. I would not go with the Dollar Tree parchment paper for stuff like this. So after them cooking, about an hour or an hour and 20 minutes, you're just going to take those little slices of cheese that we've cut up and put some in between each of the potato cuts you've made. So once you get your cheese in there, you're going to bake them up again for another 5 or 10 minutes till that cheese gets nice and melted. And look how they're kind of crispy. You can see the edges of the potatoes are crispy and then you've got that nice cheese melting down in there. I let mine sit there just a little bit till I could work with them and they do make for a very pretty presentation. I'm just topping my husband's up here with plenty of sour cream. Coming over it with some bacon bits, some real bacon pieces. Then topping it with that green onion and it looks so pretty and that was so delicious. Something I have seen for a number of years but had never tried it and I was so glad that I did. Now here are the seasonings that my husband had put on the steak, mainly salt, pepper, garlic powder, and he did use this seasoned meat tenderizer. I did not have a lot of footage of this. Basically, all he did was unwrap these steaks the night before. He put them on a plate, seasoned them up with this, and you wanna use a good coarse salt and he let them sit uncovered overnight in the refrigerator. I think this is called a dry brine. I'm not sure what he called it. I'll put, put it down here on the screen for you. But you can see we're outside in the dark like Neanderthals. And he is grilling these up on the Blackstone. He just cooked them a few minutes on each side. And he did sprinkle a little bit more garlic on them. Then towards the end, when they're really done, he's just taking some melted butter and brushing it over the top of the steaks. You definitely don't want to do this until the end because you don't want that butter to burn. These were beautiful. They were so tasty and tender. You could almost cut them with a fork. And he always says he gets them more done than what he likes. But I don't like pink in my steak, and they were perfect for me. This was such a tasty night. And I'm, you know, I love steak, but it's not something that I just want to make all the time. But he did a great job on these. They were really good. Now we're going to have some ham and beans and fried potatoes. And yes, beans are not a meat, but I do have some ham in them, and they're one of our favorites. 
just got a pound bag of pinto beans. You just always look through your beans. Make sure there's not any bad beans or any little rocks or anything that might be in there. Give them a good rinse and then I just set them aside. I had a little bit of ham that I had in the freezer left over from Christmas and I've just set it out and let it thawed for a little while, chopped it up and I'm throwing it in my crock pot. I'm gonna put that pound of beans in there. I did not soak these or anything because I'm gonna cook them long and hard in the crock pot. I put in probably four to six or eight cups of water over the top, made sure I had plenty of water, put a lot of salt and pepper in them. Then I'm just gonna pour a little bit of vegetable oil in the top, not too much because the ham will have lots of flavor and grease in it. I do like to sprinkle some onion powder and a little garlic powder in my beans. Now I'm just stirring all that up together. I'm gonna to put the lid on this and I probably started these at four o'clock in the afternoon and I cooked them on high up until I went to bed. Then I cut them down on low and I cooked them the whole next day. Now when dinner time comes, I'm just frying up some potatoes. When I fry potatoes, a lot of times I don't even peel them, I just give them a good scrub like to put them in my cast iron skillet with some oil and butter and I season them up with some salt and pepper. I also like to throw on a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder. You want to make sure that your cast iron skillet and the oil in it is good and hot before you get started. And then when I get everything seasoned, I do give it one good initial toss just to coat all the potatoes in the oil and the seasonings. Then I'm just gonna let it sit and cook for a little while without bothering it. Try to spread your potatoes out in an even layer as you can. I like to use this big pizza pan for a lid because I don't have a good lid that fits over this. And you can see when I turn them, they're already beginning to get a nice crisp on the one side, so I make a layer of them again and cover them right back up. When I come back, you can see how nice and brown they're getting, and I did not want them to get any more brown on the outside, so I just added a little bit of water and tossed them around, and I'm gonna put the lid back on them, and that will help them continue to steam and cook on the inside without burning or getting too bad crispy on the outside. I've just made a pan of cornbread and opened up a can of the Margaret Holmes seasoned greens and we're ready to eat. You can see after these beans cooking long and hard in this crock pot how rich and thick that bean soup is and that is how I like my beans with a dark rich soup over them and the ham gives them the best flavor. Now I was home here so I could watch them and make sure they had plenty of water. I did have to put a little bit more water in there and I have them kind of dry here just so you can see the ham in them but I do go back and put more soup over my beans when I eat them. Nothing like ham and beans with some mayonnaise and fried potatoes. Now I've got some pork barbecue that I had made and back in December and I had the extra in the freezer so I just pulled that out and let it sit a little while in the fridge to thaw. It wasn't thawed completely but it was on its way and I just put it down into my crock pot on low heat and put the lid on it to let it continue to defrost. And to go with this tonight, I'm going to make some loaded tater tots. And this recipe is so fun. I am using just a regular size muffin pan and I have it greased and I'm putting about four tater tots in each hole. A couple at the end, I put five in because I had never made this and I didn't know if it would take four or five. You're gonna have your oven at 450 degrees and you're gonna bake them for 10 minutes on the bottom rack. I let them set just a minute and I'm using my little bottle of vanilla to 
to make a cup out of these. I'm just taking it and squashing it down into the potatoes and twisting it to make a cup. If you have something else that fits better, use it. Don't worry, I washed my little vanilla bottle very good before I did this, and I did spray it with a little bit of nonstick spray. If you had a little shot glass or something like that, the recipe said that works perfect, but I did not have anything like that. That worked fine. And now you are going to bake these for 15 minutes more, and look how nice and crispy they come out. I'm filling them up with some shredded cheese. Then I'm going to bake them about four or five minutes more. And I will say, five tater tots was perfect. Four was plenty, but five was perfect. If you wanted to make these in a mini muffin tin, you would use two or three tater tots. Now my barbecue has warmed up fully. And this is the end of a bottle right here of uh, barbecue sauce that we have been enjoying. That's a Kroger private selection brand. And then here's a new one that we got there that we've also been enjoying. When I make my barbecue, I just use a lesser expensive like Kraft or Sweet Baby Ray's, which we also love. But I'll mix that into my barbecue initially and then when I serve it, put a little bit more expensive or nicer barbecue sauce on it. Now when your little tater boats come out, they just come right out of your pan with a spoon so easily, and I just loaded them up like you would a potato skin. We loved this meal. These little tater tot cups were so awesome. This would be a great thing to make for the Super Bowl or any time. You need a quick little fun appetizer. They were delicious and fun and easy to make. I didn't even mess them up. Now we're gonna have some oven fried chicken and a mashed potato casserole. Now I am just taking some chicken breast that I had my husband pick up for me. My Kroger was out of chicken on my grocery order. They didn't send me any. So he went and picked up some fresh for me. And I'm just cutting the bigger breast down halfway so they're not hardly as thick. And then I've got a couple cups of buttermilk here that I'm just going to soak my chicken breast in for about 20-30 minutes in the refrigerator. While that's going on, I'm going to fix up my breading for this, and I'm using a cup of flour and about a tablespoon of paprika. And a tablespoon of Lowry seasoned salt. And I'm going to throw in about a teaspoon of salt and regular pepper too. I decided at the last minute I also wanted to throw in some garlic and onion powder, although this recipe did not actually call for that. I like those things on my chicken. I really wanted some fried chicken, but I did not want to fry it. So I found this recipe from the Cookie Rookie, and it really did have a wonderful flavor. The flavor is all there, and it's baked in the oven. Now, she suggests using parchment paper, but I did aluminum foil because of my previous experience this week with my parchment paper. But you're going to melt about a half a stick of butter and just pour that over your parchment paper. Then, I brought my chicken out and I dried it off as best I could. And you're going to dredge it into your seasoned flour mixture and put it over onto your pan. Now I will say the aluminum foil stuck a little bit. Parchment would probably work much better. And I put it into a 400 degree oven for about 15 or 20 minutes. Now I'm just cutting up some potatoes and get them boiling for my mashed potatoes. Now that I've got my potatoes cooked up till they're fork tender, I'm just draining them off and putting them back in the pan. 
I'm going to start out by making just regular mashed potatoes. I'm using half a block of cream cheese and half a stick of butter. Then I'm going to finish off this container of sour cream. It's about a fourth of a cup. Going to hit it with salt and pepper. Now this is normal mashed potato fixings for me, but here is something that this recipe called for a little bit different, and that is putting some of these dried onion flakes in here. And this was really good, these little dried chopped onions. It called for about a teaspoon of those. And then putting in some garlic powder. Then before I put my milk in, I'm gonna go ahead and start mashing these ingredients in just a little bit. And if you have evaporated milk, this recipe calls for it. And I do love to make my mashed potatoes with evaporated milk. And that's what I'm using on these today. If you don't, you know, just use regular milk, whatever you have. But evaporated milk does really make them rich and creamy. So I'm just gonna continue mashing them up the way that we like them, which is a little bit lumpy. Give them a little taste, make sure they're good to go. And these were just perfect. Now you could stop here, but we just wanted to be a little bit extra this week. So I took a greased casserole dish and went on with this mashed potato casserole. Just taking those prepared mashed potatoes and spreading them out in that pan. Then you're just going to top them with some shredded cheese and some paprika. I had my oven set for 400 for my chicken, so that is what I put these on, and I just kind of watched them and baked them about 20 minutes. I pulled my chicken out when I put these in and turned it over, and you can see how my breading kind of stuck, but I kept as much to it as I could but I just flipped them over and let the other side cook maybe five or 10 minutes more. Checked it with a thermometer and it was delicious. And you can see the beautiful color on it. Now, after 20 minutes, when I pulled my potatoes out, I put some of these bacon pieces on top of it. Then I wanted to put it back into the oven and let those bacon pieces get cooked up. I didn't really want them mixed down in it. I wanted them more like a topping it pulled it out, covered it with some green onions as well. These potatoes and this chicken had all the flavor. There's something about buttermilk coating on your chicken. It's so delicious. Serve this up with some seasoned green beans I fixed up, and it was wonderful. Now we still had a little bit of barbecue left over, so I'm just gonna show you quick. I threw some nachos out one night, topped it with that barbecue, black beans, cheese, then I put out another layer of nachos, some more barbecue, black beans, more cheese, and then I topped it with some really good barbecue sauce. Threw that in the oven, got everything hot and melted. Nothing like a quick and easy leftover barbecue nacho sheet pan for supper. It was so easy and it was yummy. I just of course garnished this with some green onions. If you had red onions that would be delicious on top of this too. Put a little bit of sour cream on my husband's but I did not want any on mine this night. Friends, I thank you so much for being here this week. I hope you've enjoyed these meat and potato stick to your rib meals. They were all delicious. Took us right back to mama's table with all of our favorites. My husband was tickled pink this week with his meat and potato meals. I started to say not a casserole in sight, but we did have a mashed potato casserole. 
I don't know if I could go a week without a casserole. But I do thank you for being here this week. I never take it for granted the time you set aside to be with me on Sunday nights. Until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.